How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another house party, a Big Brother podcast, where tonight we'll be discussing the crowning of a new HOH and the first double eviction of the season. In this, the final days of Celebrity Big Brother. I'm Andrew Cox, and joining me as always, Ryan Duvall. How you guys doing? All right. <sighs> Ryan, how are you feeling about the season so right now? You know? You know what? I this is probably one of my favorite seasons. This has been a fast paced season. We still have two more episodes to go, but I can already tell that this is leading up to something very exciting. And I'm very excited to see it. Very exciting. Okay, well, tonight, you know, we're going to be talking about uh, Wednesday's episode, the HOH nominations episode, and then um, tonight's, Friday's episode, the double eviction. Um, so, yeah, we're going to start with the Wednesday episode. Um, I imagine we'll work our way pretty quick to tonight. Oh, yeah, because nothing too eventful happened in that Wednesday episode. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, I... <laughs> This episode was a uh, was a snore fest. Uh, yes, um, I will say that I appreciate it right off the bat. They did go right into more of uh, the workings that happened before the show started of why Meta wanted to leave because we, as an audience, didn't really get to see what happened right before then. Right, and I had they had made it seem like there was some giant like he had like a panic attack or there was some sort of like blow up or he just had like a breakdown and we get very early this you know this flashback to an hour or so before they're playing the comp and it's just he's talking to Amorosa and she's like oh if you you know if you really want to leave, I'll, you know, I'll do it. But just, he's like, yeah, I really want to leave. And I mean, that was basically it. So I, I don't know. I was disappointed. I thought maybe there's something bigger behind it. But as it turns out, he basically just wanted to leave. Yeah. He couldn't last for six more days. Whatever. I think he'll, he'll kind of regret that. We're, we're going to talk to him on finale night. Julie will. And I'm sure that'll be a question. And he'll, he's going to be, he'll say, yeah, maybe I should have stuck around. <laughs> you know what's funny? He on Twitter, he already put a tweet and he said like put me back in the house. Like <laughs> I sent me back in as a twist. I don't know what I was doing. So, I'm like, you yeah. <laughs> you got to be kidding. I figured. And well, so going on with that though, there was also a, a new alliance formed. I guess yes. Uh, Team Rad Sauce or the Roomy Squad. <laughs> Team Squad Goal. No, uh, these nuts. Yeah, too bad that didn't didn't play out. <laughs> yes, uh, Roomy Squad. That's uh, with Mark and James, and was Ross involved? Yeah, it was Ross and uh, Marissa, right? And Marissa. Okay. Because I remember the namesake was James and uh, Mark going back and forth. I'm glad that, I mean, well, no, because Roomy Squad sucks too. But out of all the other ones that you listed, I'm Roomy Squad seems to be above the rest of them. <laughs> yeah, they were all terrible. I mean, right up there with Celebrators. Oh, yeah. Thank God that didn't last too long. James, he just, he's not, he's not a name guy. Yeah. He can write music, but apparently not alliance names. Um, um, one thing that I did I did write down was when Meta was leaving, Melissa, or I'm sorry, um, yeah, hairspray, hairspray Marissa. said, <laughs> Marissa said, thank you, Meta, for everything you did inside the house, know, and she said it so. unironically. And it made me think, is there something that they're not showing us that that he did something? Anything? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, everybody loves him. Like, he had it in the bag, basically. Like, at least final two. So, yeah. yeah. There must be, I mean, there must be something we didn't see. I mean, I thought his, you know, Flamingo boxing match was... 
you know, it was fun, but yeah, that's, that's all he had all he did. the show. Yes. Like, that was his highlight. <laughs> that yeah. explaining how the game works to him. <laughs> I I will say that the the comp for this episode was actually pretty entertaining. Uh, the three heats threw me off because it started and I was wondering where the hell the rest of the cast was and then it made more sense but I don't like the heats because it allowed the thing that happened to happen right so um, I'm going to push back on that a little bit and I mean I thought the comp I thought the comp was the worst part of the episode really? I, yeah, I don't know who like gave the green light on this competition. I mean, it was a total dud for me. Like, it was like, it felt like it took up like half the episode, and it just. Well, I mean, really, did. when you saw Mark's time, he was only up there for like a minute and a half. The power of editing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was just boring. I was like watching them crawl around on the thing and getting flopped over on the ground. It's just like. I don't know. I thought it was, it was too long and, you know, it just, once they made the carpet get tighter, it was just, it just kept getting easier. So I didn't really understand. Right, they like, were waiting out the clock is what it was, but it was basically, yeah, it was who could weigh out the clock at the right time. And then, like you said, the way they did the heats, like it sort of, you know, allowed the manipulation almost yeah. of the, of it's, the contest. So do you want to explain that for the people who didn't see it so um the there was two heats and then there was a final heat so uh, separated into uh, three people were in each um and it ended up being by gender right it was uh, mark and ross and james in the second heat and then the first heat was um marissa uh, brandy and um all, all right, right right yes yeah, and so basically, it had they had to crawl across the um, red carpet, sort of like that was flopping around, and <laughs> the two best, the, the three best times overall would go to the final heat. Um, and I mean, Ross completely threw the thing. Oh, got like eight minutes or something. Yeah, he definitely did not want it. And so Mark and James got the fastest time in their heat, and then. Um, Brandy got the fastest time with the women so the three of them competed uh, in the final heat and James finished first but he stood up there and uh, basically threw it to Mark he was wanting Mark to win so he waited to hit his buzzer um, because if I guess if Brandy was going to win or if she was going to look like she was going to finish then he he would have done it went ahead and hit his button but he wanted Mark to win so that he could um play HOH this today. Yeah. Yeah. And so had, but see if it had been any other competition that would have never happened. So I don't, I would suggest not doing the heats again, the competition itself of pulling, you know, pulling yourself around the carpet. That was fine for me, but the, the way that it was divided up should never happen again. I would suggest right, against because that. then later in the episode, you see Brandy, getting upset and like accusing them of like oh like what happened you know basically when you were doing this competition by yourselves and you guys just manufactured it that you would it would happen this way and ross you know was like oh i didn't it just it didn't happen that way but so yeah it was it was ripe for drama setting up the competition that way and it's no surprise how it came to be and from a game point i mean Everyone was aware of what happened, what James did and what Mark did. So right, I mean, they we're not trying to hide it. Right. But then that just puts <laughs> targets on them because Almarosa put the pieces together and she was in the diary room thinking they have a final two deal. And she's right on the money. So that was, I mean, if they were trying to hide it, they sure did a piss poor job of doing that. I mean, yeah, I don't really think they were trying to hide it. I mean, I feel like people already knew at that point. It's like, really they're working together like no i mean not a surprise like and then at that point basically everyone's in some sort of pair so yeah i mean i don't know how they were how they were surprised if they were 
I mean, Amorosa at that point is the person on the outs. Yeah. And can I just say, like, as a competitor and a house guest, I love her to death. But when if she, whenever she hosts comps, which she's actually done quite a few times this season, she – something is just not natural about the way that she hosts. She – I feel like she's doing her best Julie impression, and it throws me <laughs> off from the start. It's just a little irking. It doesn't have any effect on the game, but just from my standpoint, I'm like, oh, anyway. Is it like the way she talks? It's the way she talks, yes. Because she, it's very clearly scripted, but she doesn't say it in a natural way. It almost sounds as if she's reading it right off right. the page. But, uh, I mean, other notes that I wrote down was uh, we obviously it's another episode of Celebrity Big Brother. So we had another Omarosa political question for no apparent reason, oddly placed in the middle of the episode. No apparent reason. Like, didn't need to be there. I don't know. And it wasn't even I mean, not that any of them really heavily added anything, but ever since the first one. Or the first episode where they did a couple, they've just been like. It's been real <laughs> obvious, real blatant. Right. And what was this? Was the one with the Air, Air Force, Force one, one, right? Yes. Did you know that you have to pay for your food? Let's. All right, CNN, let's jump on that. <laughs> I mean, they got to be feeding her, like, this stuff in the diary room. Right, like telling her to say I this. I also think everyone's or like, just so bored that they are just so enthralled that she is in this white was in this administration's White House that they had nothing better to do except listen to her fairy tales of her experience. I don't know. Hasn't Mark said that he would just like wish he would shut up about Mark's it? Mark's the one that asked. <laughs> He was the one that asked this very uh, Air Force One question. He was the one that started it. So, oh, really? I mean, it's usually Ross. It's usually Ross asking. Like, he's doing some sort of hard-hitting journalism. Like, just stop prodding her with this stuff, man. Yeah. I mean... You know they're going to put it on TV. It's, it's one thing to be interested in it. But, I mean, is there really nothing else? Like, does it, none of the rest of the cast has anything going on in their lives that they could talk about? I get. I don't know. Not that, that you know that they want to show us. I guess there was something else in this episode, um, and I actually it was in the other episode. It was in tonight's episode too. Um, in the like martini room or whatever it is, the one that last season was like just a giant couch. Yes, they're like. <laughs> The table has like an iPad That's on what it or something. I wrote that in my notes for tonight. <laughs> I'm like, what is this iPad? I've seen it before. Like they've showed it a few times and I'm just like, but nothing's on it. It's like a screen and there's like, I'm just wondering what they're typing on it. Oh, yeah, I was typing in... on it. So it makes me think yeah. that I don't, I'm like, what? ordering like maybe they're, they're putting in requests for food or maybe, something. But, but they normally just do that in the DR. Right. Well, they, I mean, for me, I wish if they're going to show that and not give any uh, detail about it whatsoever, they they should. They need to be like, hey, there's an an iPad that should not be in this house whatsoever. Let's uh, acknowledge to our viewers that are most likely questioning what the hell is going on and say, oh, this is just for this and this only. Yeah, I mean, it looked like it was for a very it was like a specific use, but I don't know. I I couldn't tell what it was, but. I don't know. I did, noticed it a few times this season, so I just thought it was interesting. But uh, the nomination ceremony was was fun. Yeah, so uh, Mark, you know, HOH does his nominations. I thought he was very uh, practical in what he did. He just said, you know, you were just happened to be aligned with the wrong person. I'm putting you up and Brandy, you know, you're starting to cause some issues. I don't think anyone was necessarily mad at him. I think that was pretty much the uh, consensus of the rest of the house. So I think he made a smart move by doing that. Yeah. I don't think it was something that, you know, got too much blood on his hands or anything. 
but that rounded out that episode. Was there anything else from that episode that you feel needs to be talked about? Mm, no, not really. We can go ahead. A lazy episode of CBB. But I, tonight's episode, I thought was great. A double live double eviction. I'll take it. I liked it. It was good. I mean, it it's one of those things that it suffered a little bit from what we've seen before this season where we are getting hyped up for a like Monday eviction and then we get it quit. And then after that, we have to basically do a whole nother eviction cycle getting what we expected. So like the first half of this episode is a little bit like we already know what's going to happen. Like we know Brandy's going to go and like, right. It's just that basically, that basically would have happened last week. Probably if Meta hadn't quit Ross or Brandy would have left. So now we're getting that and it's kind of expected. So, but yeah, the second half was definitely exciting. And I mean, they even started the episode, this episode with Mark saying brain is the target. And multiple times that was said, brain is the target, brain is the target. And he made sure that that was the goal. Um, I think Brandy's skated by for the past few weeks, so I think they were kind of done with her already. And it all comes yeah, down to that real quote that was for no reason made. You think that was it? You know, had she have not done that, she would have been in the same category as Ariana and Marissa. I mean, but that kind of pulled her out from the crowd and made her noticed by the rest of the house. I think, I think it's just like all the drama and like, that's part of it. You know, the stuff she starts, yeah. but, but, and like she, she started it again with James and Mark outside. Yeah. So that was a big part of the beginning of the episode. And, was the blow up between Brandy and uh, James. James handled himself well. Uh, I think he did a good job of disproving her point and uh, it definitely helped his image by kind of pointing at her and being like, I'm I'm doing the classy thing. I'm not going to start anything. I'm going to walk away. And then she continued to keep going. So, yeah, she she definitely did, you know, keep putting the nails in her own coffin. Yeah, I mean, it was not it was not surprising a um, turn of events at all that she ended up being the first to go on this double. Yeah, I, I wrote down that she just became really unbearable. Like at first, like she was somewhat likable, but then by the end of it, I was ready for her to go. It's like if you're just gonna be just nasty with everybody, just leave. Yeah, because she started going after you know like Marissa for. <laughs> I don't know, like nodding yes, or for whatever. Nodding. Had but, you know, I'm not, I don't really like Marissa that much anymore. So I don't really care all that much. Her voice has become almost unbearable. Well, yeah, she's, that nasal <laughs> nasal voice has been there all season. I, I did write down what it, what the exact uh, quote of Brandy's was that made me realize I'm so done with her was uh, we obviously had another uh, Omarosa segment, of course, because it's an episode. So uh, so Omarosa is telling about her qualifications and her communications degree and doctorate and master's. And Brandy has the goal to say, isn't communications like the easiest to go through? And I'm sitting here thinking, oh, okay, watch it, bitch, because... I'm in the communications <laughs> course too, so let's let's calm it down. And so ever since then, I was like, "All right, I'm not I'm not a fan of hers. I'm ready for her to her to leave tonight." Yeah, it was it was her time. I mean, I kind of, I thought she was a little entertaining sometimes, but you know, everyone's gonna go here in the next That's two true. days, so I was not surprised that she was the first. Uh, the veto of tonight was fun. Yeah, and um, it was basically a rendition of the 
bass mashup ones that they've done basically forever. Um, it was a little different, but they're like on action figures. And um, so Ross, he was the only one that wasn't playing. Yes, right? correct. So Omarosa was first and she, she wanted to throw it. She didn't want to win, she, and which I thought was strange because if Brandy had won, I mean, she would have gone up. And she probably would have gone home. I don't know. I so I thought it was a little. I thought it was a little bit risky for Almarosa to be like, "I gotta throw this." I mean, that was after Brandy had like really done everyone dirty. So I feel like you know she probably felt pretty safe about it because everyone was against her. Even her own at one point alliance is like, "All right, we need to get rid of her." Almarosa is actually doing a very good job of keeping everyone in, in good graces with her. Right. But I mean, like if Brandy had won, she would go up in her place. You don't think they would have taken the opportunity to get rid of Ariadna though? No, not at all. Not with Amarosa. No. Well, at this point now I'm feeling that Ariana's probably getting a little, she's become a little sleeper agent that we might need to, get rid of her before it's too late she's gonna activate real soon and it's gonna be too late i mean i think people are they're like want her to win i mean they're nobody they'll put her up but they don't nobody wants her to leave that that face swap video Everyone loves or the her. face swap veto i feel would be difficult like watching it i was like i couldn't do that but if I was in the house and I was surrounded by these people looking at them day in, day out and looking at the memory wall, I right. would be able to fly it's, through that. But apparently it's not. The picture from the memory wall. I mean, it's not like it's random pictures of their eyes and noses. It's the ones from the pictures on the memory wall. Right. So they're, they're quite accustomed <laughs> to these photos. This isn't unfamiliar territory to any of them. So, yeah, Omarosa's first, and she wants to throw it. And she spends 25 minutes doing the first thing, and she's like, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize how much time I was spending throwing this. And I'm like, how do you not realize you spent a half hour doing something? like Not once you turned your head. It was not even believable at all. A half hour. Yeah, she wasn't being subtle about that at all. No, I mean, (laughs) I don't understand how you don't realize that much time has gone by. But one thing that I did notice, she, once you were done with the comp, you then joined uh, Ross in the HOH room. And that followed through for the rest of the competition. But at one point, because Omar also was first and the second competition was starting, that left her alone with Ross and she was able to talk up game and do whatever she wanted. And she took the opportunity for it. I thought that was smart of her, but I also didn't think that it was fair for the rest of the cast because they would, they'll never get that time that she was given. Right. So we'll see. Yeah. Do you think anything that that potential final two is going anywhere? Well, she asked the question to Ross. She said, do you think that you can beat Marissa if you were sitting up there? And he said, no. Which, okay. Not even, not even close. Like he wins that 10 times out of 10. I don't think Marissa beats anybody left in the house. I think she comes in second if she's there against everybody. I think yeah, I don't think she can win. Who does she beat? I think she could easily beat Mark. I think she could easily beat Omarosa. Um, no, 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 no. You don't think she could? No, if Omarosa's there with Marissa, Omarosa's winning. I don't think that it would be a vote for gameplay. I think it would be a vote on like good and evil, and I could see the rest of them saying, like, 
Oh, you know, <laughs> I mean, they are like the good and evil, right? Ones, so, you know. well, I mean, that's a, two very contrasting people. If if they were the right, final two, I mean, was... so I think that the way that it would work would be, to, you know, Omaros has given a lot of the people trouble, and Marissa really hasn't. So I feel like, she, but I mean, we have to get there first. I don't think that'll be the final two. I'd be very surprised. No, I don't know what. Yeah. That, I, I don't know how that happens. <laughs> Unless Amorosa wins the final HOH and brings Marissa, you know, because she's basically, you know, she thinks that's who she can win against. But, you know. Well, let's talk about that now that you bring that up. Who do you think? All right, so we'll go through and who do you think each person should bring with them if given the opportunity? Well,. So okay, let's yeah. James went in the in the double. He was the second casualty. Um, so he's out of the picture now. You know. So here's it, it's going to work like a regular final um, finale, except instead of three people, it's going to be four. Which I don't. What do you think about that? Because I don't. I I'm glad it's not doing it with five people, but I still think. Yeah. It's too much power. Like it's 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 too many people. Right. And that's kind of. That's what I like about the third place because it's like oh you got so close, but you just missed it like and it's it, it came down to one person's vote, but to do that to two people right. that's brutal. I mean. Where it all is coming down to one competition, like four people have to, you know, whoever wins, like, oh, oh well, you yeah. know, you, you can't do anything. You're like, just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah. You know, this competition wasn't for you, and you know, you hope better hope they bring you out of you know the three other people out of there. So, yeah, I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's kind of. I don't think they need to do it as a thing. Like I think they could have scheduled it where it was a normal. They could have done another double and easily avoided that. Right. So I don't. I don't think it was a very good idea. But anyway, it makes it a little more um, cutthroat. I think is what they wanted. They just wanted something that would add a little edge to the competition. I guess. So I. I would say uh, Ross. You know, this is we we're not we're not going to know who comes in fifth. So I'm just going to keep everybody in play. So I guess he seems really loyal to Marissa. So I would say he brings her because yeah, I think he wins against her. I think he wins against almost everybody. So I think why not just take Marissa? Um, I guess I would think Marissa would take Ross, but if she was smart, she would uh, evict Ross. Um, and take someone else. And I think he would respect that move. See, I don't know if she would, if though. She, if she took someone else and said, sorry, Ross, I'm here to win. But I don't know who she would take instead. Maybe Mike Mark or something. I, um, I feel everyone would probably take Mark along with them. I don't know. If I, Almarosa, I think she would want to take I think she would want to take Mark or Marissa. So who else? Mark, Marissa, Ariana, Amorosa, Aria. Okay, yeah. Nobody's going to take her. You don't think you think she'll get cut? Because she, no, uh, yeah, she has to, or they will lose. Well, like the only thing where that, or I would be like, who's going to win is Ross versus Ari, basically. And then other than that, you just. Like who, who? I don't know who. That would be an honest, you know, who would win. I don't know. But for the most part, I mean, like Ari would beat Amorosa. I think Ari would beat Marissa. Ari would beat Mark. So I don't know who she would take. I guess she would probably. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait it out and see, but I mean, that is 
that's going to be a big decision for whoever does get that. And yeah, I'm not envious of whoever has to do that. Well, what do you think about the jury in the way that um, a portion of the jury has been out for so long and been able to watch the episodes or, you know, have people send them stuff from the feeds or whatever. And then basically the other half is, you know, just leaving the house. I mean, Brandy and James are just now leaving and two more, three more people are going to be leaving and going straight into voting basically. So I think that's going to be the, I don't know. It's we've never had a jury like that before. So the three people left unaware that'll be eliminated on that same episode. I mean, yes, you're right. They'll only have what they saw to base off of, but for the people tonight, Brandy and James and everyone else that's already left, they've had, or they will have video supplied to them, I'm sure. And they'll have plenty of time. I'm sure James and Brandy are already looking online. They've gotten their phones back. They're looking at all the stuff that they've missed. And I'm sure that they'll make it apparent to the other three that join them. They'll have a commercial break and they're going to let them let everyone know. So you think there's going to be some kind of round table? <sighs> no, because it'll be live and I don't think that round table will work live. Cause usually it's taped. Right. Well, what if they do it with the, with Shannon and Chuck and Meta and Brandy they could, and James. They could do Keisha. that then. Yeah. But the three. And the three come in at the end. Like they like normally is just one person. Yeah. And then the, they, I guess they could just give each of the three a question. Uh, on yeah. set. Yeah. They could probably do that. I just don't know really what they would ask. I think it'll, it'll well, no, I actually do know what they'll ask. Um, I'm sure they'll ask Omarosa what it was like to be in the White House because uh, that'll be a good time to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. gotta get it in yeah. there somewhere. But other than that, I mean, I can't imagine. <laughs> Because there was, there hasn't really been much uh, game drama. It's been a lot of personal drama. Um, so much. I, I don't know what kind of questions it'll you could ask about that, but yeah. probably most about alliances because there's been so many. True. You know? So uh, there's a couple other things. Um, so yeah, Big O, she won the second HOH, um, and then she put up Ross and Marissa, which I got excited about. And then Ross promptly won the most bizarre veto comp that like, well, what was that? I mean, yeah, it was just a true or false. It was, it was total crapshoot. Total crapshoot. <sighs> the uh, not the HOH, the veto, where they like find the photo oh, that looks yeah, different. That was go. See, oh, I already even forgot about that one. That's what a mess that was. Yeah. I I mean, anybody, I mean, that was just who you happened to go in the right room, well, basically. And it was live. So it was one of those things where they just had to do something real quick. So they didn't have time for anything else. I mean, but come on, they could have done a number That's of competitions true. besides, you know, find a picture in the room. And then, so yeah, Ross won. And this off. goes back to what you were talking about earlier when something is about to happen, there's always a wrench thrown in and they say, no, we're going to do a safe elimination. You know, you thought that we were going to have a surprise elimination. Oh, <laughs> you thought, he thought. And Omarosa, yeah. poor, poor girl. Anytime, she, anytime she's nominated people, the nominations that she's made are not the same nominations come voting she has never been able to vote no, out the person that she's targeting she was happy to see James go she was you know she feel like she did a good a job did well done not, on that that surprised me 
Me too. They were working together the last I saw. And that was a great time for her to just about eliminate anyone else that she wanted. I don't think James yeah. was the one that I mean, she should have gone gone for. Who do you think she should have went for? Honestly, with the remaining, because Ross was safe, Ari. Yeah, I thought it. But she was like, I think they're a little close. I don't know. She was whispering something to her like after she put James up, probably making sure that he would go. And then afterwards, Amorosa was acting like, I don't know. She just, she did the hardest thing for everybody. And she just, you know, oh, you're welcome for getting she, James yeah, out. Those like, exact words too, yeah. <laughs> well, the only thing that I can think of that, she would do that is because she was trying to get on their good graces. Um, so, Cause you'll see Omar also go back and forth. She'll like, she'll say we as if like the girls and her are a team, but then she'll go and do stuff behind their back that they're completely aware of. And then the next episode, you'll just see her hanging out with them and being like, so what are we going to do this week? And it's like, so are you with or against and so I feel like that was more of a push to say, see, I'm still loyal to you all. That's the only thing that I can possibly make any sense of that. I guess, but I mean, she can't be, you know, she can't be loyal to everybody, which I think they said something else about at the same time. Like now we can really compete or something. I'm like, what are you? <laughs> There's two yeah. days left, and it's basically like one competition. The, comp- the, comp- the competing is over. Like, <laughs> you can now compete. Are you kidding? Yeah, no, James was not the one that was hindering anyone from competing. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a uh, final five, and there's going to be another, like, crapshoot, you know, find the matching photo in the bathroom, and, you know, oh, you win. Yeah. It's going to be luck. It's going to be luck based. So. That's for sure. <laughs> Flip a coin. So there was something else Julie talked about, uh, which I think they talked about on Wednesday. I'm not 100% sure, but America's favorite house guest. So, uh, Ryan, which uh, rich celebrity are you going to vote to get $25,000? I'm going to – I will vote. (laughs) I will vote for Lady O, but she will not win because – well, let's – Let's both say who we think is going to win on we'll do three, two, one, go. Does that sound good? Three, two, one, Ross. Two, one, James. Really? Okay. (laughs) I figured. Ross would be my second choice. They're pretty much tied in my mind, but I I went with James. Yeah. And again, if you notice, they didn't give you the option to text vote. You have to go and do the big robot again, which they have still – not done a good job of explaining what the hell that is. Just go on the website and vote like a normal person. It's or don't even vote because these people don't need twenty five thousand dollars on type on top yeah. of their stipend. I mean, I Omarosa mean, is getting millions of you, dollars. You've got to be yeah. kidding me with this. They've been in the house for like you know twenty days. Like, what do they need money for? <laughs> the babysitter that they had to hire for the month. <laughs> yeah, that's what stipends for. Get, get real. America's favorite house guest. <laughs> but yeah, I think James, his army of you know, tweens, big time rush tweens that are on Twitter, they're gonna vote like crazy for him. But I can see Ross winning too. So that would be my two guesses. Yeah, I think it. Of course, I guess. I guess. It goes, it reaches, everybody counts. So I could also see Shannon. Well, yeah. Yeah, I guess. You know, spend the $25,000 on the elephant rides. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, she could push, go for that route. (laughs) But I don't know. I don't think, like she was, she was there for half the season, but I feel like America's house, America's favorite is always um, a little later in the season. Because, I mean, if you were cut early on, sorry to say it, but you're forgotten about. Yeah, I mean, I I forgot about Keisha earlier when I was naming people. So there you go. Exactly. So, you know, her and Chuck 
are off the table. You know what? Honestly, I could see viewers maybe having a soft spot for meta, but if it's also a, a vote for you know favorite gameplay, then he doesn't have a chance in hell. But you know, if he didn't quit, maybe. Oh, that's true. He did but. quit, so you can't really um, appreciate that. He would have had a chance if he hadn't quit. He wouldn't but. need the America's favorite because he'd have second place in the bag. Oh, uh, what a different what a different season we'd have right now. Oh yeah, cuz then it would make that finale competition even more so important cuz you know for a fact that they would have brought him along. But uh you did mention something earlier that uh his Twitter is already blowing up. Yeah, did you see the tweet I was talking I haven't about? looked at it. No, not yet. But he is already wanting to come back. <laughs> yeah, he has said... Um, oh, man, let me see if I can find it. He's asking... Yeah, he's asking for people to vote for him for favorite house guest. That's, that's a long shot, buddy. I don't think it'll happen. <sighs> but... <laughs> He when did he go out? He went last week. Last what was that? Last Wednesday? No, one Wednesday. It was a day. It was a Monday. Monday. It was yeah, Monday, wasn't the it? episode before. But he only had to last six more days. Like, I think I'm honestly more agitated about it than he is. He, if he would have just stuck it out. Would have would have definitely made it. Yeah, I can't even find his account. (laughs) (laughs) Meta World Peace at Meta World Peace. Yeah, it's something else I thought was funny. Um, They after um, James went up as the renom, and they were doing their speeches. Him and Marissa, they were both like, I don't want to come campaign against this person, but hold up and let me campaign real quick. Like, but I will do it really hard right now. They both made good points because I did think about it. I was like, huh, because, you know, he made the point like, if any of you are sitting next to her, you'll probably lose, which honestly, I, I do see her as a, a threat in the vote. Who do you think are her votes? In the jury? Well, I mean, it depends on who the jury is. I mean, that's true, but like, let's say if people are out there so far. I mean, I think she she helped Keisha uh, move out. She was the one that helped her. She didn't use the veto. Then. So, I mean, <laughs> Chuck is up in the air. Who knows? Uh, that could be a yeah, vote for, for her. Um, that's that's like going to be a road vote. I could honestly see Shannon joining in because I don't think. No, she's. I don't think she's voting for her or Ross unless she literally has to vote for one of them. Cause she was pissed at them. She said that they backstabbed her the most. Yeah. I mean, maybe she's, you know, changed her mind and is thinking about gameplay, but she seemed like pretty bitter. And I guess I, after what we saw tonight, that Brandy probably won't vote for her. That'll be a vote in the opposite direction. But James might... I, that's the thing like these people haven't had many personal vendettas against each other because they've only been here for a month so they didn't really have that cabin fever switch that most seasons do so you could you're it's not as uh definite as it usually is so right. it's it's up in the air we'll have to see Indeed we will. We're only two nights away. So 
Sunday night we will we will know it all. So we'll be back for another episode. Yes, we so will. So we'll be back on Sunday night. The episode is on Sunday. The episode's on Sunday. I'm uh, assuming we'll, we'll be back, back on Sunday. On Sunday. Sunday or Monday, we'll do one. Perfect. All right, so everyone stay tuned for that. And stick with us because we're only two episodes away from the finale. Yep, keep it tuned here and uh, follow us on Twitter at the BB House Party. See, see you guys next episode. Peace.